Lee. Here. Item 2, consent items at 2A, approval of special meeting minutes from October 20th, 2011 at 2 p.m. So moved. Second. Commissioner Deaver is absent. Derho Yes. Gregorian? Yes. Kayvanian? Yes. Chairperson Lee? Yes. Item 3, introductions and presentations. At uh, 3-1, recognition of Joylene Wagner, Arts and Culture Commissioner, 2005 to 2011. Let's table that. We'll table that un until later. Next item. Next presentation by Anita Garuni, Glendale Artist. Hello, Commissioners. I'm so honored to be here uh, at the city of Glendale to present myself and my artwork. Uh, of course, I have met already Ripsine, and uh, she was kind enough to uh, give me this, appoint uh, this appointment and provide me with the uh, manual and policies. My name is Anita Garuni. I am a self-taught uh, oil paint artist. I was born in Iran to a family uh, filled with love and appreciation for art. I've been uh, residing in uh, America for more than over 25 years, of which uh, more than 15 years has been in Glendale. Therefore, I couldn't find any better place than city of Glendale to uh, donate my artwork, which is expression of my deep gratitude for America, my country, who accepts all, no matter uh, the race, the color, the religion, or creed, and uh, with an open arm and gives a safe haven to the immigrants of the world and creates great opportunity for growth in all aspects of life. I have been passionate about two things in my life, uh, young children and art. Uh, my educational background is in early childhood and uh, while I work as a preschool teacher, I'm able to produce some art as well. I discovered my gift for painting and uh, drawing at a very early age, and I was painting since then. Uh, in, teen, in my teens, I uh, painted and uh, exhibited and sold my artworks in Tehran, Iran. I provided you with a folder that has the painting in it and I, uh, the explanation, auto, some autobiography and uh, the explanation for the artwork. Once I married and started my family, I take a break from my uh, painting to focus on caring for my family. Now that children has grown, I return to pursue my lifelong passion. I am California Art Club member, and I had ex exhibitions twice at the Silvana Gallery in Glendale. And Paramount Picture has rented uh, some of my paintings for, to represent in their movies. I couldn't rest if I don't pay respect to my race for who I am, and I couldn't be at peace if I don't express my gratitude, deep gratitude for America, for who I have become. The name of the painting is Home. Home symbolizes a placeless place, a dwelling that you feel safe, that you feel loved and honored to, as a human being. Uh, as you see in the painting, the background is the prestigious Mount Ararat, uh, the, a landmark for Armenians. Then it meets the flowing fields of wheat that lead to the ancient ruins of old civilization. In the bottom right corner, you notice Mr. Mashtots, a priest who invented the unique new characters of uh, Armenian language and who is known to be a national hero. Sayat Nova sits at the bottom left corner, the greatest Gusan and poet who had a great influence in the development of Armenian folk music. Right below Mesrop Mashtots and Sayat Nova, you will notice Khachkar with a saying, always together, love each other. In the center, we have the Statue of Liberty, who symbolizes freedom, friendship, and peace, and represent America, uh, who provides the ground to all nations to flourish, excel, and triumph. Ahtamar symbolizes Armenians. 
The torch from Ahtamar has three flames, which symbolizes the Trinity of Christianity. The statues are built uh, on the rock, on the solid foundation. Instrument, dancing girl, music, arts, painting, and so much is part of our foundation in which we pass on to our offsprings. The plant sprouting from the rock is our future generation that will, that will continue to tell our stories and build a legacy. The torches create beams of light that represent the enlightened people from our culture. All the members from Komitas to Hovanes to Manian, William Saroyan, Parush Sevak, they are all people who bring value to not only our, to our nation, but to the world. These individuals are the field of wheat of our nation. Wheat symbolizes bread, the very same bread that satisfies human hunger, are these enlightened people of our Armenian heritage that satisfies the hunger of our soul. Our Armenian nation has grown through, gone through turmoil and troubles that not many have endured. Yet our nation continues to flourish. We are strong-willed people that will be heard. Our voice cannot be silenced. <laughs> so uh, I am really very honored to be here and present that artwork that I am willing to donate to the city of Glendale. Very quickly, <clears throat> we have met with Anita a um, couple of weeks ago and we went through the policy procedure. She has a copy of the policy of the donation and we will follow the uh, guidelines of the policy. Once we have all the paperwork, we'll come back to the Commission um, for, with the recommendation. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, what do you mean by you will come back with recommendation? Um, if uh, we will send you a policy just to remind you how how it works. Uh, staff, it's staff's responsibility to get the paperwork from the artist, from the donor, to follow the maintenance requirements to see the artwork, and based on the information that and the guidelines we have in the, our policy, we'll come back to the commission with a recommendation to accept or reject the donation. Oh, I see. But uh, so are we empowered to accept donations to the city of Glendale? You will make... Ar art donations or works of art donations. Work of art donations, um, staff will recommend to the commission, and it will be up to you to recommend the donation, accept or reject to the council. Oh, so do we so recommend you will it? be recommending to the council. Because that's what I thought. Ultimately, it's the city works. council who does it. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's a very nice and interesting piece of work, very rich and all kinds of culture. Um, since you mentioned that you have two homes, uh, your ancestral home and your adopted home, um, it, it kind of depicts all of it, and I wish it had depicted a little more your um, uh, adopted home uh, landmarks and things. But overall, it's really, really very nice. And uh, can you tell me why? you decided to uh, paint Mount Ararat from the uh, now is what, nowadays Turkish side? From the Iran side. That's from the Iran side? Yes. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is from the Turkish side, by the way. Yeah. My mistake. <laughs> All right. But overall, it's a very good picture, and it's a very nice gesture that you are trying to donate to us. It's a good work. I've seen some of your work at Silvana Gallery. Uh, they are very nice. And I didn't know that, uh, uh, you, I, I didn't really know you personally, and you probably didn't know me, but I think our families go back several generations. So I'm, I'm really glad that you are uh, making this gesture. It's a not very nice gesture. I appreciate that. Thank you, Anita. Commissioner Gregorian, just a remark on the which side of the Ararat Mountains. I think for artists, lands and uh, geography don't count much. We see them from our heart and soul. So I suppose her perspective is from her soul. I was, I was interested to see what uh, you know, the thinking behind was at the location that she just painted it. But it, it really doesn't matter. The, uh, the our artwork is an artwork, and it's a good one. So appreciate it, and thank you. We'll bring item one back. Three one. A recognition of Joylene Wagner, Arts and Culture Commissioner, 2005 to 2011. Okay, I am pleased to invite Ms. Joylene Wagner to the podium. Late again. <laughs> 
Well, after so uh, so much delay, we're finally here, and we're pleased to um, present you and use this opportunity to thank you and recognize you for your six years of service to the Arts and Culture Commission. I did some research online to get some updated information on Joylene Wagner's current <laughs> bio and end up with a long list of organizations that she's serving right now and actively involved with the community. It's been a pleasure working with you, Joylene, and uh, we have a plug that we would like to present to you. Um, just, um, we're not going to go uh, list of all these organizations. There's so many, uh, but I would like to uh, definitely mention that she has been serving um, as a representative of the of the school district uh, since her election back in 2005 in the school board. Yes, correct. Yes, and uh, she's currently um, um, is the president. I, I'm, I'm not even going to try. There's so many. I, I'm She's been um, holding all these very important positions with so many organizations. <laughs> Sorry, most, of them, most of them school board related. I'll, yes, although, school board related. Uh, pleased to be serving, continue to serve in a different capacity on the Glendale Arts, now with the Arts and Culture Liaison, Ros Mick there. Um, it has been a pleasure. When I first came on the board, um, the this school district seat was vacant and had been, I'm not sure for how long, but Pam Ellis, uh, whose husband has been very, well, who both, she and her husband have been involved very much in the Alex, uh, suggested to me that I might apply for this seat because it would be nice to have a link with the, the district and it, would, and it would be right up my alley. And I knew on that job, said, sure, good idea. And uh, little knowing, what all it would mean, but um, overall, I have two wonderful thoughts. One is that um, it has been a pleasure to serve and to help help that linkage between the school district and the city and all of its and all of its efforts. Three thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, two that, however many times we've talked about about our role and continue to our being the Arts and Culture Commission. I have certainly seen the extent to which this, the commissioners represent uh, true volunteers in the city who, whose hope and whose efforts are put to increasing the opportunities for arts in the community. And third, what a pleasure it has been to get to know each of you, because we all serve together, all the staff, uh, city employees I had a chance to, to work with through the Unity Fest committee in particular and was happy to serve on that again this year. Hope to continue that role because it's just a fun party that day. And, uh, and, to, and to begin the affiliation with Glendale Pops. And so I hope you all have your Glendale Pops tickets, your season tickets ideally, but at the very least your tickets for the December 9th concert where we have our youth chorus singing with the, the Pops Orchestra. In fact, I'll be going to set up the chairs to help Maestro Cat and Goob set up for the rehearsal with the kids today. So um, thank you very much. It's, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I'll continue to see you at lots of things. And I, and I suppose that, Stephen, you're the uh, district rep at this point. One way or another, you are a parent in the district, and so you oh, have that connection. Yes and no. I think they're they're supposed to bring that issue back. That it's an option. Well, whether it's an option and whether it's official or not, you're a parent, so True. you can you can help make sure that we get the information if it doesn't come to us, and I think it will. But thank you, and thank you all for serving. Shall I come up there? Uh, meanwhile, we have Dr. Nielsen. You know that. She's in contact with us, Paula Nielsen. And she's kind of the representative of the Glendale uh, Unified School District that works with the commission. Well, we also have now a public information officer, Stephen, Steve Frazier, who is uh, staying very much in touch with, with okay. city and district events and sharing information. So if there's something coming up, let the, let the public information officer know. Yeah. Oh. 
Thank you. Mrs. Marashan, so you have the contact number for Mr. Fraser as well? Or who? Stephen Fraser, the public info person of the Glendale Unified School District. I can find it. I can find it. Because we need to be in close contact. So that would be thank you, Jolene, for providing the information. Next item, please. Next item, oral communications. Discussion is limi limited to items not on this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. Staff may refer the matter for investigation and report. First speaker, Chuck Witte from the Glendale Public Library. Thank you, Chairperson Lee, Commissioners, and uh, City staff. Uh, again, I'm Chuck Wyke. I'm the Community Relations Manager for the Glendale Public Library. And today, briefly, I'm going to tell you about a, a recent library program just one week ago. And I'm also going to let you know about a few upcoming events at the library. Um, the library is, is working on its fifth One Book, One Glendale citywide reading event. Uh, we actually have two books involved, one for adult readers and one for younger readers. And the screen shows Janet Tastian, and her, her book was My Life as a Book. Uh, it, it, she visited the library a week ago on November 10th, uh, discussed her book to a, a, almost a full auditorium of young readers, and uh, they asked questions from her. They had a good time. They really had a good time. Many of them had the book. A number of them bought the book. Um, we asked and found out that about three-quarters of the crowd had actually read the previous four books in our one book series, so that's, that's good. Uh, these are young readers. They're not little. They're not in high school. They're sort of tweens. Um, here they are standing in line for autographs. Um, Janet's son is 17 years old. His name's Jake, and he provided the illustrations in this book. And this is a book uh, that's the, the author wrote it for a reluctant reader. And really, in her mind, it was a boy, and, and in a lot of ways, it was her son. And so she asked him to illustrate uh, different words in the book. In this case, he did invisible. That was clever. Um, investigate. And finally, yoga. So he provided those illustrations. Uh, he's 17 now. He has, I think, a two-book illustration deal already going. So he's, he's done really well. Um, and, and the kids enjoyed it. They stuck around and uh, had a good time talking to the author and, and the son who actually drew on stage. Um, tonight, uh, we have Alice LaPlante, and she's going to discuss her book, Turn of Mind. We actually have uh, local author Denise Hamilton, who's going to be there and interview her about the book tonight. Uh, Ms. Hamilton is also a best-selling author. Uh, we just found out last week that Alice won a prize. It's called the Welcome Trust Award. And if I may, got a little quote from, the, from Vivian Perry, the chair of the judging panel. This was in Great Britain. And I quote, Technically daring, Turn of Mind tells a gripping story in the voice of someone actually affected with Alzheimer's and emphatically confirms the ability of literature to tell us more about the heart and soul of an illness than any textbook. Hats off to Alice LaPlante for carrying off the prize for her very first novel, particularly against such stiff competition. Uh, so that's tonight, November 17th, at the Central Library, 7 p.m. On Sunday, we have a celebration of, again, a, a local author. He unfortunately passed away a few years ago. He was a University of Utah professor, uh, Leonardo Alishan. We'll have a video commentary from people who knew him and some other artists. Uh, in December, 
uh, actual music at the Central Library. Uh, the Topanga banjo and, and fiddle group is going to come. They'll bring a couple of singers. Uh, Saturday, December 17th in the afternoon, they will perform for all ages American folk songs. And it'll be a sing-along, so I invite you all to come down, sing along with the uh, Topango Banjo and Fiddle Group. That's my report. Well, um, Chuck, thank oh. you very much for coming. I, I like the idea that we initiated this contact, that you would come and present this information, because I want people to know that we are so rich, our city of Glendale is so rich in culture and it's so rich in doing so many wonderful activities. Question, I don't know what are the protocols for such, but does GTV6, is there a chance that there could be some announcements on GTV6 as well as for us what the programming is? So people could also um, connect and hook up based on, because TV is a very strong form of you know, communication. Certainly, and, and they do a great job at GTV6. Uh, we usually send our major programs, the major events, like uh, the two one book authors. They're already on, they've been on GTV6. Um, the one on Sunday's on there. I, I send them what I can. They cannot put everything on. They've got some limitations. Uh, but we send them a lot, and so does brand. So we keep them very, very busy uh, with advertising. My other question is, you used to have, I don't know, still it goes on because I had a program that we hooked up with the library, Central Library, that they were coming and doing some, uh, or we were bringing our kids to Central Library. They were doing it in Spanish or in Armenian, in the two major languages, stories and artwork. Do we still right. have that? We have, in, as you said in the past, I don't know if we have an Armenian story time or a Spanish story time. Um, we do have computer classes in different languages. Some of it, some of those uh, children's programs were taught by, or given by library staff, and some we had performers come in. So we haven't had an outside performer. We lost our uh, Armenian uh, 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 storyteller. Uh, but we, we do our best, and if, if you look at GTV6, Every few months, there's Treehouse Tales. I believe we added uh, uh, some Armenian language and Spanish language performance. Because I think that was major, because the person who was reading the stories, um, you know, there are certain cultural things that, um, mm -hmm. uh, being from the Armenian heritage, um, we do it in a different way. But in America, the way we do all dramatize and do stuff as we are reading was major, because that program kids were coming, very young kids were coming with their parents, with their young parents, and they were learning how they could be interactive in reading a story, dramatizing, making an artwork and projects out of that. And um, that was very helpful because when later on the kids during the class time, when uh, art teachers do that, they can understand better and it doesn't seem kind of funny, it seems kind of being part of it. I wish that could come back. And the other question, the other one is, do we still, Central Library, do, do they offer the homework club afternoons or they don't? We offer that at the Central Library only now. And that's our, that's our staff, that way, our, our uh, library staff that work on that. We don't have it at the branches right now. Okay, even in Central, Central Library, Library do. because that's, the location is such, because I remember at the given time with the program I had uh, at the Glendale Unified, uh, parents were welcoming because that was major. It was a major help for kids whose parents did not ha know how to help them, especially if language was a barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, tutoring that was being done there was a major uh, help for our kids. So I'm glad to hear that it still goes on. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, um, our programs in any language really foster reading and use of language. And in any language, it, it helps. Um, the kids are better off for it in school. So I'll pass that information along to our staff. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We're very proud of our libraries. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Arlene Vador from Associates of a Brand Library. Thank you very much, um, Commissioner Lee and members of the Commission and staff. Um, I'm here to make two announcements. Uh, for the first one, I have some visuals. Um, 
we, the Associates of Brand Library, are going to host a sale of artwork and music and CDs and periodicals and various things, books as well, uh, that have been donated to our group over the years at the Brand Library. We're calling this event, It's a Wonderful Brand. Um, and it's going to be on December 11th from 2 to 6 p.m. We will have refreshments, and um, we are really doing this for a couple of reasons. One, to stimulate interest in the Brand Library and especially in our organization, uh, which is there to support and uh, help to fund activities at the Brand Library, and also because we are planning to make a large donation to the renovation fund. Um, I think you all know that the Brand Library is going to be renovated starting early next year. It's a long-awaited and exciting activity. Um, so all proceeds of this sale uh, will benefit um, the renovation of the library. Um, we are uh, co-sponsoring this event with the Friends of the Library and the Glendale Historical Society. And uh, as such, we're providing uh, complimentary admission to members of those three groups. So we encourage the public and everybody here to be a member of one of those organizations, or maybe even all three. Um, but if you're not a member, you're certainly welcome to come, and we're asking for a $10 donation at the door. Um, as I said, all proceeds will benefit uh, the library. We have wonderful things for sale, which you can look at in more detail if you go to our website, www associatesofbrand.org. You can click on a link on the home page and uh, you'll go to a, a slideshow of some of the works of art that we're going to be selling. Um, this is just a little sampling. I don't want to go through all of them, but we're going to have the works of Robert Brown, who is a very well-known Glendale printmaker who now has passed away, whose collection we own, as well as a number of other artists, um, some of them prominent, some of them are reproductions, and the prices will vary from down to the very bottom to a little bit more expensive, but nothing that is too expensive. Everything is very affordable and priced to sell. So we hope you come. And we hope the public will come out for this event on December 11th at 2 o'clock. And we look forward to seeing everybody there. And the library is, of course, at 1601 West Mountain in Brand Park. And if you have any questions about this event, I'd be happy to answer them. I did give you flyers, and I hope that you will all spread the word uh, about this event as well and send them to your mailing lists. Um, while I am on the announcement phase here, I have another announcement to make on behalf of the Brand Library. Uh, on December 3rd, uh, Sunday at 2 o'clock, um, the Young Artists Program from the LA Opera singers are going to do an abbreviated version of Mozart's Cosi Van Tutte. Um, so that's December 3rd at 2 o'clock, and we hope everybody will come out for that performance. It's sure to be really spectacular. Opera in the recital hall there is always pretty amazing. So thank you very much. Then are you going to talk about the Jane Brand Purchase Award oh, Collection? Yeah. <laughs> Whole other topic, so we'll go right right to that. Uh, thank you for allowing me to spend a little time on this. Um, uh, I just wanted to re-present, because I'd done it a couple years ago, um, some information on the Associates of Brand Library's art collection. We have, over the years, collected um, a pretty amazing set of works on paper. Uh, and this is the result of giving an award uh, for an outstanding piece at each one of our annual juried art exhibitions. I think we're the only organization now sponsoring uh, a, an international juried art exhibition in Glendale. Um, and it's the annual Works on Paper show, which just had its 40th anniversary. So we have amassed a really amazing collection of artwork um, over the years. And I don't want to go through and talk about all these pieces of art, because I'll be here for two hours. But what I'd like to do is just scroll through some of the pieces that we've accumulated over the last few decades. We really started in earnest in the 70s 
and uh, have gone all the way up um, now and uh, acquired our last piece at the last show, which closed in October of this year. But the reason I'm here is um, to ask for your help in getting this collection out into the public domain. Um, we would very much like for this collection of artwork to be seen by the public um, and to be out in the public at public buildings, City of Glendale buildings, uh, office buildings, any place where there is public access. We would like to be able to loan this collection and we certainly don't want to charge anyone for it. We just want to make sure that the, the pieces are protected, that they're insured properly, uh, and most importantly of all, that they're appreciated um, because they are beautiful. So the idea here was just to show you um, some of this artwork so that you could um, maybe give me some advice and tell me how it is that I uh, can help the organization get the collection into the into public hands. Uh, it turned out to be much more logistically difficult the first time we tried than we thought, and uh, we didn't get very far. So um, I know there can't be discussion because this is an oral communication, but I'd like to respectfully request that the uh, the issue be agendized at some point. So um, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Vidor. Have you tried the gate pr project or the gate uh, scheme that we have? In well, actually, um, no. It, se it seems my impression of gate is that what they're really trying to do is showcase uh, the work of artists who are, you know, submitting actively a portfolio of their own work, so individual artists who make submissions. Um, and we're not necessarily focused on vacant spaces. I think the gate program uh, directs itself to vacant storefronts. Um, we would really like to focus on city buildings, um, city facilities, and public access trafficked places such as the lobbies of office buildings, et cetera, et cetera. Restaurants. Um, I think Gates' mission is to populate empty spaces to, so that they'll be filled and that they'll have art in them. And we want to use this program not only to showcase this beautiful collection, which is just sitting in the basement of the Brand Library now getting dusty, uh, but also to really um, make a statement about the Brand Library and the group and the arts in Glendale as they relate to what's going on at the Brand Library. So um, uh, we hadn't really pursued the gate um, uh, approach. And this is also um, uh, retrospective pieces, too. These are not, except for the most recent pieces in the lab, it, it seems like my, my impression of the gate program is they're looking very much for art that was created within the last couple of years. And we have a large collection of pieces that span all the way back to the early 70s. So I may be completely off base on this, but that was my impression. It's a great idea. It's just, I don't know what are the legalities. Let's say if we want to have an exhibition at the city hall in the lobby down there, or let's say Hilton, you know, it has to be somewhere that is a little bit safe also as far as, you know, people that come in and etc. cetera. Um, is there a special rule or law that we have to follow to do that? Yes, as you remember, we are still working on our temporary display policies. Okay. Once we have the guidelines and the policies in place, then it will be much easier for us to follow those procedures and consider exhibiting the collection in one of the city's um, um, facilities. Right now we're working on the parks um, facilities and um, for outdoor indoor policies, temporary display. but. Um, Eventually, right after that, we will be creating another policy for public places, which will um, give us a, a broader um, opportunity to display temporarily um, exhibitions mm -hmm. such as your, your collection. Can I ask a question, or is that too much focus, then it becomes a discussion? Huh? Let's try to avoid discussion, but there are a couple of issues we need to know before we, we need to agendize this, then we'll do that. 
Mike? Well, I mean, she can ask the question and we will not respond, but just we would have it in mind as part of the interest of the public. Can we do that? Sure. Right. No. Um, I, well, my question was, I was wondering what the time frame of the policy was. Um, we're hoping by next commission meeting we will come to the commission for their approval. Uh, yes, Jess. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, um, we recently developed and a approved a student art display policy, and we identified, I think, three or four community services and park department facilities where art students participating in our lifelong learning classes could display their art. So it, it'll be a public display of art by our students. And, and it's restricted to, to students. Uh, we talked about the next iteration being, or the next progression being, a establishing a, a policy to display public art in um, all um, park facilities, or again, park facilities deemed appropriate for d displaying public art, where you don't have to be a student, but it would be you know, fledging artists or, or, or renowned artists already. Um, and so we're working on that now. Um, I don't know if it'll be done by the next meeting or, or the meeting after that. And in fact, needless to say, there are a lot of legal um, issues that we have, to, we have to sort through. But because it's our department and it's our department's facilities, we have a lot more influence and, and control over that. So we're working on that. Um, and then the next iteration or the last progression would be a, a citywide policy where we would have policies and procedures and, and, and a system by which to be able to display um, art at all public facilities. That will require a lot more coordination and discussion with the other departments that also have jurisdiction and purview over other city facilities. And, that, and that's further on down the line, but probably months and months away, like five or six months um, away. So I don't, I don't know how that helps you, but as it relates to being able to display art at least at, at park facilities, that, that'll be a lot sooner than the broader policy, and hopefully that'll be within the next couple of months. Okay. Thank you very I, much. I, I personally would appreciate uh, you know, speeding this up as much as possible, practical. Um, however, the way I look at it is um, the artwork that a sample was presented here to us by Ms. Vidor um, is not just anything that can be put anywhere. Paintings and sculptures usually need specific lighting, specific light direction, and specific environment to be able to come out at, its, at their best. And the way I look at it as of now, it seems to me that Brand Gallery um, is the only reasonable place where we could demonstrate and exhibit this kind of artwork. So um, I'm not quite sure how we are going to handle this issue of uh, presentation and display with the overall public um, um, art policy. So I'm really hoping, probably what I'm, I guess I'm trying to say is, hopefully our park facilities, and if we have any meeting rooms or any, any, any areas, hopefully they will also be um, ready for lighting and display uh, uh, purposes to do justice to this artwork, because otherwise it's going to be kind of a half-baked Exhibition. I mean, displaying art is not just putting it on an easel and putting it somewhere, anywhere, and say, well, we are displaying art. That wouldn't be doing justice to the artwork and the artist. Uh, Chairman Lee, Commissioner uh, Gregorian, um, that is one of the things that, that will be analyzed, and it is possible that, that many, if not all, of our facilities will not be conducive for all types of art exhibitions or art displays. Uh, obviously, cost uh, will be a factor. Uh, our goal would be that whatever policies and procedures that are developed uh, would be at no cost to the city. So if there are costs, it would have to be borne by the, the, uh, the artist displaying the art. And, and you're right. Th there will be a criterion requirements where it still has to be conducive to the, to the art that's being proposed to be displayed. And, and that will be all part of our analysis. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Item 5, business agenda at 5A action items. At 1, approval of the Diamond Awards for Achievement in the Arts Project Guidelines and Nomination Application. Chair Prasandi, Commissioners, at the last Commission meeting you have approved the implementation of the Diamond Awards for Achievement in the Arts and recommended that the awards ceremony should be scheduled um, next October, October 2012, during the National Arts and Humanities Month. Um, in order for us to move forward with publicizing this um, uh, project, Diamond Awards, you need to, we request that you approve the guidelines and the nomination form. Once it is um, approved, then we will be printing the hard copies and it will be sent out to our mailing address. The downloadable version of the guidelines will be available on the city's website as well as on our newly developed Glendale Arts and Culture website. Um, the deadline is scheduled for the nominations to be May to 2012 and the venue and the date for the, the award ceremony will be announced later. As of now, we don't have that information for you. So if you um, have any questions about the guidelines, by the way, we haven't changed the wording since last time, um, but you are open to um, make any suggestions. I have one suggestion. Yes. Um, under the, uh, the, the criteria and, and application process, um, under number one, application materials, and it says submission of artwork. For the performing artists, uh, oftentimes when I'm, you know, like let's say for college applications or what have you, when they ask for some kind of a, you know, video evidence or audio recording, and they say three to five works, they usually specify some kind of approximate time or, or duration of the recording. So I, I, think, I, I think instead of writing three to five works, I think it'd be more helpful if you gave them a time duration, because one work may last half an hour, for example, and you might get you might gain the same kind of information from that one work than you would three to five, if mm -hmm. if all those pieces are you know two minutes or something. Right, like a demo tape. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, so it'd probably be more helpful if we listed duration of time mm -hmm. rather than a number of works. And do you have a suggestion? How many minutes? Three to five. I hadn't quite thought of that, but I, I, I think three to five works would, arts, would constitute something between 10 to 15 minutes, I'm guessing on average. So. Okay. I, I think, As I a think, musician, I, I thought, think um, 10 to 15 minutes, I think is plenty minutes. of, yeah. For, for 12 to 18 year olds, I think that's plenty. Okay. I, I don't think that's too overbearing. 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. You have the sa same suggestion um, for artists 19 and over? Because it's more or less oh, the right, same yeah. criteria there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that should be a little 15 bit. 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, which one? Number two. Item two. Artist 19 and over, same. Right. same. Oh. Under the performing artist. For the performing? Artists. Yeah. So between, so between 15 and, and 30 minutes or something like that. So that's for all the performing artists. Right. That's a very good suggestion. Because, because when you write, you know, three to five works, it, you, the works could be, there's... 20th century pieces that you could play that each work is 15 seconds or something. So it doesn't give you enough idea, so that's still the reason why. But other than that, I have no, no other suggestions. I think it's, um, I think it's fine. I think we, it didn't come up last, last time because we didn't have any performing artist nominated at the last time the work. Thank you. For I have a couple of questions. Yes. Uh, on the selection process, mm -hmm. it says... Um, uh, the cultural affairs section staff will utilize a selection pool from which to choose the selection panel. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the 
judges, right? The juries. What exactly? Correct. Yeah. We're talking about the master list that we have created uh, from, um, and it has the community uh, professionals in arts and music, and we will use we will use the list to select this year's judges, and br it will be brought to you for your recommend for your recommendation uh, to select the, judges from that pool. If this is going to be more or less in um, October of 2012, as we kind of tentatively think is going to be, why would we have to review the pool and uh, finalize it by February of 2012? Well, um, October is going to be the, the awards ceremony. You need to remember, uh, organizing the ceremony will take at least four or five months. So if we have May as our uh, deadline to get the nominations, once we have the nominations, uh, judges have been decided who will be doing the selection for, from these applications, then it will give us another at least four months to get ready for the, the award ceremony. October is going to be the ceremony. Okay. Before October, May is the deadline for the applications for the nominations. Okay, if the application for nominations is May, in May, why would the judges be uh, decided in February, two months in three months in advance? It really doesn't matter. In February, we will know exactly how many judges we have, who is available, who's not. We don't want to wait until May and then start judge finding the judges. What's the difference? No, there is no difference, but this is such a timeline that kind of... Just to be um, actively... Um, in our opinion, it's good for, for this... Prop because it's going to be a, such a long process from now until next October, it's good for us to come back regularly and talk about the subject and get the community involved and make the nominations. You see, I have no problem with that. Uh, my point is we are having a selection, a pool of judges mm -hmm. approved mm -hmm. before even we know what kind of artwork we are going to get and we even say that we don't necessarily have to have all the categories with all the um, you know different uh, arts. So uh, we might decide on a pool of judges and then end up with not having you know a certain category here to give it. So and you know overlapping. I mean I, I'm sure that selection and the judgment and the final decisions can be up to a point overlapping the organization of the main event which is in October sometime. So um, I don't know, it just kind I, of doesn't I, I make do sense. I do see your point now. Uh, that's a very good suggestion. I thought in February when we come back to you with the master list of community members to select from, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the selected people are going to be judges then the final decision for you to decide for two groups of judges uh, will come after we know exactly who is, has been nominated and we will be considering the experts in those nominated artists areas. So it does it basically make sense? we are previewing the list of the right. We're just jury. coming back with the master list. It's not about that in February you will be able to add new names to the list. I'm sure there are so many names that they are no longer live in Glendale or it's, it's, it's a big list, list of names, and there are some suge suggestions already that we should add to the list, new people, new active artists in the community. So February we'll have the tentative list of the people and we would have a chance, that means we'll start our discussions from February, and we would have additional people if we want to recommend to be on that. So the procedure starts there, but the finalizing exactly. of who are the jury would be closer to the date that we will have our... Um... Correct. Well but, said. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, still, I have my reservations about this, but that's not a big deal uh, to uh, no. you know, make it. Uh, the other issue that I have... Um, I know that at one point 
we had six categories and community partner was business and community partner as individual. Mm -hmm. Now we have combined the two and right. I understand mm -hmm. the reasons behind it in the past. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure that we are very clear the reason we originally did this uh, community partner business mm -hmm. and then another category community partner individual was you know I want to understand the uh, I want everybody to understand the philosophy and the thinking behind it so that maybe we, we have to separate it again if at all possible and the reason is when we have a com uh, when we were talking about community partner was not necessarily that that individual or the business was uh, an artist but they were kind of either supporting or contributing or sponsoring or somehow making some kind of a contribution to the arts so let's say it's a car dealership, and in the past we've had um, car dealers who have uh, sponsored art. You know, that can be a community partner, mm -hmm. and their resources are totally different. But when we said some com uh, individual, it could have been a parent who was busing the kids around to rehearsals and or donating clothes or giving some food when uh, the night have performance and things like that. And, you know, individuals, uh, th their, their role was very different from um, the uh, organization in that sense. So what I'm trying to get, I guess I uh, mention here is, would it be, is this carved in stone or there might be a chance that we will separate those two categories again? Because obviously for an individual is almost impossible to compete against an organization with much bigger resources and funds to, to be a partner in arts. It can be separated. However, the reason I um, combined these two categories, last time we didn't have any community partner business nominations, if you remember Commissioner Gregorian. Secondly, uh, combining or keeping them separate doesn't, still doesn't clarify what it means. Community partner individual, you're saying that is not clear unless it, it will be separated? No. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not... Sir, uh, Commissioner Lee, if I may inter interject. I think the problem is um, the potential of receiving a great business partner nomination and a great individual partner nomination and having to choose between the two because the categor categories combined versus having a great nomination as a business partner and be able to select that um, business and also having a great individual nomination and being able to select that individual so that they both get awards. The way it's, it's proposed now, we'd have to choose between one or the other at the expense of the other you know, well-deserving recipient. So we could, we could take the, the, the opposite tack and, and break out the category, mm -hmm. and then if we don't get any nominations in one, there's, there's nothing lost. That's exactly my uh, point, and that's exactly I, what I would like to suggest. And we had this originally in there, and when we don't have uh, enough nominations, we can combine. If not, let's give the individual the, uh, the, you know, the credit that it's due, and same with business partners. That's exactly what I had. That's I exactly really appreciate it. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate you getting right to the point and understanding the issue right. clearly. Okay. So my, my, my recommendation is uh, to um, uh, separate these two and have six categories. And again, uh, let the panel of judges decide whether they want to uh, grant each, uh, you know, uh, in six categories or five, as originally intended. Okay. Um, I have a question, Mrs. Marashan. How are we going to publicize? Okay, um, it will be publicized through um, press releases, which will go to our Glendale News Press, will be on our GTV6 bulletin board. It will be, um, we will be sending out um, the letters, the hard copies of the guidelines and the nomination forms to all our mailing list. The downloadable um, forms will be available on the city's website. Also, um, eventually we're going to design this form. The copy of the guidelines that you have um, as Exhibit 1 and 2 today attached to the report is going to be redesigned. We're in the process of designing, making it um, nicer. Um, 
But that will be um, also uh, um, found, can be found on our uh, Glendale Arts and Culture website. Um, and the e-newsletter, which is going to be published. Um, I have a suggestion, or more it's a form of a question, which I don't know legally how that fits in. Is there a way we could ask the different corporations in the city of Glendale to also recommend, kind of, I would like to see these corporations be involved, to be part of what we do, so maybe they could sponsor or they could even come with kind of awards that goes with it. So um, is there a way we could approach or you know, process it or proceduralize it so different corporations in the city of Glendale could nominate a, a, uh, an artist or a group or one of the six categories. So somehow we'll get them involved. Uh, Chairman Lee, I think it would be a simple matter of obtaining business mailing lists from, from you know, the workforce development section of the city. They do business outreach and probably our redevelopment agency and and send out letters to the businesses in Glendale ask for their participation and cooperation in this project. Besides we, have, we can do that. And we have five um, merchant associations in, in the city. <coughs> uh, through our chambers of commerce we will be able to get the list of because if they would also recommend two or three, kind of, they would be more involved. You know, just sending something and saying, come and participate in our event or sponsor is one thing. When we have them kind of being involved by choosing even three of their cousins or God knows who, whatever, but the jury would finalize who's going to get the uh, awards or not. But they would be part of it somehow. They would follow up. I think that would be a nice way of including. Chairman Lee, I, I think it would also be a good idea for either the chair or one of the commissioners to, as, as we get closer, to make announcements at the city council. Oh, yes. Sounds good. Well, with that, I move to approve the, uh, uh, the nomination, the criteria, with the changes. I will second. Roll call. Commissioners Deaver is absent. Erhovenesian? Yes. Gregorian? Yes. Ivanian? Yes. Chairperson Lee? Yes. At 5B reports, information only at one cultural affairs coordinator list of activities. Chairperson Lee, Commissioners, this item was requested to be on the agenda by Commissioner Derhovanesian. The report is about um, cultural affairs coordinators' activities um, in association with uh, arts and cultural organizations outside of. Glendale. Today um, I would like to talk about some areas of these activities and uh, one of them, we on and off been coming back to the Commission with different announcements, but mainly um, these activities are involved with the, the LA County Arts Commission um, organized events. Um, since 2009, in an effort to um, know other art administrators and work with them closely, we have been we have been um, going to the art administrators meeting, where um, different projects, policies, and um, um, ide ideas have been discussed during those meetings. As a result of those um, activities, we were able to bring the arts tune up educational workshop to our city. We were able to introduce Space Finder LA um, to our commission, which is an online site uh, connecting artists and art organizations together. And this is a site that offers rental opportunities for performing artists and visual artists. Um, a very powerful resource um, and informational meetings that is um, provided by the LA County Arts Commission for all the arts and cultural uh, professionals. The second area I would like to share with you is the group that I have joined um, a year ago uh, called PAXOCAL, Public Art Coalition of Southern California, which, composed, which is composed of public art 
managers, public art professionals, or people who are involved in in the area of public art. So um, this group meets quarterly, um, and they discuss different aspects of the percent of art policies, new ordinances. They uh, talk about um, their new projects. Uh, some of them um, are successful, or if they are, they have some challenges. It's a great place for uh, for the professionals to meet and share these ideas and um, get um, also their projects get exposed through through this group. Um, Arts tune-up, uh, once again, you are very uh, familiar with this project, has adopted one of the topics um, called licensing for visual artists, and it has been um, recommended, and staff was invited to conduct this workshop throughout the LA County um, cities in um, um, Latin American Art Museum in Laguna Beach, uh, in Long Beach, and we conducted the same thing in Woodland Hills, and also just recently at um, Art Center in Eagle Rock. So uh, basically, this is the compact um, presentation of the activities. Well, I would like to thank you, Mrs. Marashan, for going through getting all the information together for reporting because um, it's not only cultural, but it's also very political to be able to be interactive with whatever goes on in most of the progressive communities and city governments of other uh, cities and counties. Because this way, you have mapped city of Glendale in what they do, because you have become kind of like an ambassador of the city of Glendale in the area of art and culture, that you go and represent all of us. You represent this community, and you are the right person with your background and information. I'm very glad to say that. So you take us to those communities, and you bring in whatever they do, which is very important, because we do not want to be kind of uh, stagnated in whatever we are in one little area. Um, and, and it gives kind of more credibility to the Art and Culture Commission of the City of Glendale. So I'm really grateful for your personal enthusiasm because I know that you personally are very eager and enthusiastic into researching to, so, to see and know what goes on all around and to be part of whatever happens in the world around us. So thank you very much. Basically, I wanted this to be on record as well because, you know, this is being taped and I want everybody else who is watching because you would be surprised. Many people watch this program through their uh, websites because they don't have the GTV6, but they have their webs and they go all over to see what happens. There, we have some people who are more interested, I think, who don't reside in Glendale and I don't know why, but some Somehow that's how it works. Mm -hmm. To see that how much is being done as a commission, as, as a city government organization. I know we are not an organization, but we are part of the city government that we provide this prestigious kind of uh, activities for the city of Glendale. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Mr. Jestoran, for making it possible for us to have the staff in her category and to give her the time to be able to do all those activities and participations. And I hope this would expand much more and we will really rightly do what fits our community. Thank you. Item. Cultural Affairs e-newsletter. Well, this item is on the agenda, commissioners. Just to inform you that um, the, the newsletter will be resuming its publicity um, beginning December 2011. The schedule for the quarterly newsletter and the deadlines for the materials is uh, being included in the report. We just wanted to make sure that um, you will be aware of the deadlines and we would like to publish the newsletter without any um, delays or any interruption. Um, this year, the format will be slightly different. 
um, we would like to showcase um, artists or the art organizations in every uh, newsletter. And um, we will encourage you to send us your favorite art organization or the artist that you feel is um, 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 strong enough, has strong enough portfolio that we would like to share with the community. Um, that's all I have about the newsletter. We will be uh, public publicizing this newsletter through the constant contact, the same email um, pub marketing organization we worked with last time. And we will be able to um, also receive monthly records of how we're doing. We will be able to know uh, how many uh, readers we had, how many uh, uh, times it was forwarded to someone else. So we will be able to analyze um, how it's doing. It will be a measurable um, uh, project for us to know. That concludes my uh, report. I'm very excited that you are resuming this. It's really a good idea. Excellent. And I know it takes a lot of hard work. And I know that some of our commissioners have been, uh, actually the two absent ones today, have been incredibly instrumental in this, and I really appreciate that. Um, I think, um, you know, this really will enhance uh, not only the composure, but also the exposure to the community. And uh, uh, we will have all kinds of other, you know, additional information in there. Um, the only question that I have to make sure that all the organizations and artists in the community are clear about this and they know that there is no favoritism in, in that sense, uh, here you say the format will be edited slightly so that we will be showcasing artists and art organizations in our city. Uh, when we are showcasing any artist or any organization, what do we have a criteria to showcase them? And if we do one organization, what if another organization comes and says, hey, what about us? Well, how, how's, how, how are we going to work that out? I don't have all the answers for you, Commissioner Gregorian, but I'm assuming we will be publishing, publicizing this e-newsletter four times a year only, and it will be only one organization showcased in each newsletter. So it should be the best of best for, to be um, showcased on our e-newsletter. How do we determine the best of the best? Well. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot, no, but you know, um, I'm just trying to avoid any unnecessary hard feelings from some people who may not even understand the process. I agree. So, I mean, I might have, for if you ask me, I have many, many favorite organizations. Some of them are a little slightly, slightly more favorite because of certain things. But, um, you know, when we have only four newsletters a day, a, a year, and we are showcasing one organization per newsletter, mm -hmm. then we are actually, you know, not including hundreds of other per people and organizations. Well, uh, you need to um, remember that the newsletter is not a promotional tool for the community artists or art organizations. It is an informational newsletter to connect them, to give them a lot of resources or information. So uh, even if we don't have a um, um, showcased artist or an organization at, at the newsletter, that's okay too. It so can we somehow make some kind of a uh, so-called gentleman's or ladies agreement uh, that an organization or an artist that we showcase, and I'm, I keep on using the word showcase because it is mentioned in here, would have to also be somehow active and influential in the community. Like, uh, and, and like, let's say if it's, a, if it's a music school, they have to have at least several concerts a year, let's say. Or if it's a 
um, painting school, they have to have at least 100 students or have at least two annual exhibitions a year. Or something, something where, you know, will kind of stimulate more activity from that personal organization to get the honor of being showcased in our release letter. Because I believe if we are going to showcase an art, artist in our organization, it should really be perceived as an honor for the artist or the organization uh, to be showcased in an official city e-newsletter. So uh, again, I'm, I, 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 this might be something that we are going to establish in the future, some criteria, whatever, but I want to make sure that this is clear enough to avoid any misunderstandings in the future. Um. Can I, I agree with you 100%, but as far as when we choose, even if they're busy, let's say there are five different art schools that they are very busy in the community. If we want to include how do we choose one of them to showcase, it's, it's a suggestion. It could be we could use uh, Mrs. Marashan, who is a professional curator, or we could use the commission, so it could come to the commission and we would vote on it. The same way as we are choosing the banner for the airport, uh, the art so we could have the commission make a decision. Or we can leave it to the discretion of the staff as long as there is a reasonable criteria uh, for you know, this judgment to be made. Mr. Chairman Lee, um, I would like to suggest that, that we come back with um, recommendations or options for uh, the criteria and some guidelines and, and the process that we'd, that we'd recommend. And I don't know if it has to be you know, one organization per per issue. It it could be a a, a group. You, you know, w uh, one issue could be the the five most prominent art schools um, in our community, um, and the next issue could focus on on, on a different um, a medium or or genre. Um, but I think we should come back with some criteria and guidelines and get get more feedback from the. Uh, from the commission. That's a good uh, recommendation. Uh, however, let's not put this on the back burner for the December issue. Let's, whatever your intention was for December issue, let's move forward. But for starting next year, then let's have this discussion. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next item. I'll do that. Arts tune up in Glendale. Chairperson Lee Commissioners, this is an informational report to let the Commission know that the Arts Tune-Up will be returning to Glendale next fall. Um, you are already familiar with this workshop and um, you know that it provides artists with practical information and resources on a variety of arts related topics such as health insurance for artists, fundraising, marketing, grant writing, um, copyright, issues and of course uh, licensing for visual artists. Once we know the exact date of the workshop, we'll come back to the Commission um, to let you know about the date and the venue for this pro uh, workshop. Could we announce this on GTV6? Because there are many artists in the community that might be interested with the information. Sure. When the time is right, we will do everything we can. Now we need to remember that the website is going to be actively working and we will be using the website as a marketing tool as well. Well, somehow I would like to make sure that we would make the recommendation and later on people would get to the websites to know that they should search for such a thing within the website. Sure. Next item. Item 6, Commission and Staff Comments. Well, me again. The uh, uh, several issues. Um, first of all, let me report that uh, I attended the Glendale Arts uh, bi monthly meeting at the Alex Theater um, on November 8th, just about last week, as the liaison between the um, Commission and the, uh, Alec, uh, the uh, Arts, Glendale Arts. Uh, other than the 7.30 meeting starting, which was a little too harsh for me, everything else went really nice and smooth, and uh, I got to know um, uh, most of the uh, uh, 
Glendale Arts Board members who were present. Uh, we had a very nice meeting. Um, and uh, I reported what we are doing in here and uh, our activities and our plans, annual plan, work plan, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and um, they also have a major uh, plan for next year, a lot of uh, good activities. Uh, I'm not going to go in detail into that. Maybe we can invite uh, uh, Mr. McComb here or a, a representative to give us a more detailed report. However, uh, there are two major things that they are doing. One of them is uh, expansion of the Alex Theater. They are uh, thinking and planning for that. So that's a very exciting thing, and I'm really hoping that it will go well. They have raised some funds, and you know, they are, I, I'm not quite sure when exactly they are going to start, but the, this is in plan. So I'm, I'm really very happy uh, about that. And the other issue uh, is that they have organized a um, um, an orchestra, the Pops Orchestra, where they are going to have their first uh, concert. It is on uh, it's Glendale Pops Orchestra, December 9th, um, and with uh, David Benoit and Youth Chorus and Taylor Dane. So uh, at the Alex Theater, December 9th, please make sure you mark your calendars and support this. It's an incredibly uh, difficult endeavor that Glendale Arts has taken and I'm ex I really expect and I foresee with all the artists in, uh, on this um, list, I, I foresee a great orchestra and uh, you know, a very nice performance especially the December 9th one um, unfortunately I'm going to be out of town otherwise I would have definitely been one of the most enthusiastic per persons who would bought who would have bought the tickets, but I encourage everybody, the commission and the community, they, we really need to support this uh, Glendale Arts, uh, the Glendale Pops Orchestra organized by Glendale Arts, and hopefully they will be a big success so that they can continue uh, and uh, uh, thrive and uh, bring uh, more arts and more music uh, and more talent into our stages and our scenes. So again, reminder, Glendale Pops Orchestra, December 9th, 2011, at the Alex Theater. I am not quite sure about the time, but I believe it's either 7 or 7.30. So uh, please follow up the uh, uh, instructions or their ads or whatever. Um, on um, last Friday, I think it's when, uh, August 11-11-11, uh, um, I attended the um, opening of this new exhibition in McCurchian Gallery on uh, Maryland. Uh, it was a very nice and interesting exhibition, and I'm uh, very excited to uh, uh, report that the mayor also graced the exhibition by her presence. Uh, she and her husband showed up, and you know they enjoyed the exhibition. We had a very nice uh, kind of official, unofficial chat about different things, um, and uh, she was very happy about. Uh, the um, uh, gallery to be there and to participate in um, in the uh, activity and cultural life of Glendale, especially in that area, because that area apparently, hopefully, will be de designated as kind of a part of the art district, and uh, hopefully we will see a lot more activities in there. So, and it was really a very interesting um, uh, exhibition. I the exhibition is still going on. So I recommend the community and our commissioners to go there and enjoy the exhibition. And also, um, the day after, on uh, November 12th, I attended the Caravan uh, uh, dance uh, concert. And it was absolutely amazing, very nice. They put more than 100 uh, students and performers on the stage. Um, the uh, dancers came from uh, Israel, from uh, Armenia, from Austria, from local artists, uh, and you know, dancers three years old. And you, I mean, they were the most cutest and the uh, int most interesting dancers in there, and they were professionals. Absolutely. Uh, a, an amazing good show again at the Alex Theater. So, you know, they were here last time presenting this uh, event. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I thought it was just a great uh, uh, thing to have. And I would like to encourage uh, them to have more than annual uh, 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 events, but you know how it is. One, one evening of performance takes 
probably a year of practice and planning and, and it's, it's organization and it's really, really hard. But it was there. And again, the mayor was, um, uh, the mayor was not there present, but uh, she uh, gave them a, a certificate of appreciation from the city of Glendale, which was very nice. She sent it. Uh, and also uh, the assemblyman Mike Gatto and uh, uh, I think there was also Adam Schiff, uh, uh, Congressman Adam Schiff also sent some proclamations to, for Caravan Dance Studio. And it was, overall, it was a very exciting and very nice and encouraging uh, event. Um, I have a couple of questions from Mr. Duran. Um, I understand that there are four projects, major projects, coming to downtown Glendale, building projects, in the next few weeks. And apparently the developers are requesting um, uh, a, uh, I don't know what the right word is, uh, are requesting to this, their projects to be reviewed before the end of the year so that they can lock in the current rates. And um, apparently there is this 1% or whatever it is, 2% of the arts uh, uh, contribution in there, which they are willing to pay into that pool. So my question is, when and how are we going to determine what is going to happen with this uh, arts uh, contributions from these major uh, projects that are coming in? I expect four major projects to have a reasonable amount of uh, funds to be uh, deposited into this account. So if uh, my question is, when do you expect to be able to know and how we are going to know uh, if we have a, uh, a plan or not? And if we don't, when are we going to have a plan for these funds coming in our budget? Uh, Chairman Lee, Commissioner Gregorian, um, we, uh, Ripsme and I um, still need to meet with the community development staff and recommend that it's, it's time that we begin to develop the implementation policies and procedures and guidelines for the urban art program and the 1%, 2%. Um, I, I think everyone would agree that there are uh, questions about exactly how it's to be implemented and who who is qualified and gets to determine um, a what um, on, on, on certain matters. Um, so we still we still need to do that, um, and so it'll probably be with with, with the holiday schedules probably the early part of next year, probably in January. But but I think we have time. Um, yeah, those projects are are the goal is for them to to go into plan check uh, uh, by the end of the year in order to uh, to benefit from the um, the current um, development impact fees, um, and so so there's time. And, and again, I think there's recognition that that we need to do that, and there's recognition that the Arts and Culture Commission will be um, advisory advisory board. Part of that process. So my, my request is if we could, I know that your hands are full and uh, I know that the holiday schedule and the season is coming. Uh, my request is let's please try to speed this up as much as possible because it seems that in um, different departments and also up to the highest level in the city, there is not really a clear understanding and perception of what those funds will be used for. And I think that is the key. The sooner we know and find out and uh, have a clear policy, then we can recommend as an advisory board, maybe in a joint meeting with the planning commission, or we may, maybe we can even have a uh, subcommittee or ad hoc committee between a couple of representatives from here and the planning commission, and try to hash out something because the projects keep on coming and we really need to move on this. We cannot really put this on the back burner any longer, I, I believe. Uh, could I uh, well interject? Um, as far as the planning department, their bylaws, you have a different word, I don't know what you call it, um, when they come up with their, uh, and yeah, their bylaws 
based on what was presented, and I reviewed it very carefully, they have a procedure on how this needs to be done, but it mentions several times that they don't know which organization, would it be the Art and Culture Commission or others that would be the advisory. And they have in their protocols of that advisory body should sit with which group of people within their own uh, department. So that part is clear. It's just the part that is not clear is what needs to be done with the funds or how the funds would be directed. So I suppose that makes it a little bit easier because the protocol is there, <coughs> just the money part is going to be decided. But our participation, if we are the advisory body, then that part is clear, I think. How do you, what was the word? You, we always use it right now, it doesn't come to me, which means the same as bylaws. That Rules and regulations. Protocol? No, protocol. no. no. Um, Policies, procedures. Policies or ordinance? Ordinance. In their ordinance, it discusses in detail uh, of the procedurally how this advisory part should be working, but the money part, which most probably is the most important, is not clear yet. There is one other issue I wanted to discuss. Actually, I had this in mind, but today it, it was the best time to bring, again, this is just for us to have a food for thought. Um, when the city has areas or buildings or halls or wherever, um, and when we are renovating, is there any way or how, what is the process to make sure that that area is kind of prepared for multi-purpose uh, use. And one of the reasons is, today we were discussing when Ms. Vidor was here about that um, art collection, and we, uh, um, we have several uh, areas and buildings and halls, like in the library, in the central library, uh, that although it's a very nice and huge hall for certain assemblies, but it's not good for, uh, let's say, art exhibitions. Uh, so I, basically what I'm trying to <clears throat> ask is, is there any way that we can somehow include these purposes f for u future use where with just a simple adding some certain lighting or something, we can ha have an additional use for that space? Like the Glendale uh, Civic Auditorium is a great hall, but the lighting and everything else is so terrible you can never have an exhibition and quite often it sits there empty. So, um, again, just a food for thought. If we can uh, think about this and c bring back to use our city spaces a lot more efficiently and for more uses. Yes, Chairman Lee, Commissioner Gregorian, we, as we do our analysis for the citywide um, policies on uh, public art displays at, at citywide facilities, we can include um, that analysis as well in, in terms of, of um, um, taking into consideration the future, um, if we can have in our, our consciousness um, designing renovation projects with, with that in mind. And, and of course, um, any analysis and, and report that we do will not only uh, be reported back to the Commission but also uh, to the City Council as, as they would make the final decisions on any record. Um, could I make a suggestion in that area? Um, since one of the areas that the money from that one or two percent art that we are talking about, um, <coughs> I know that to have lighting for an art exhibition or to have the system that you could hang things is very costly because we were trying to do an exhibition and just because it would cost about fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars just to for the lighting that was necessary. So why not to have in mind that in the future with this kind of money that comes in, as they said, for dual purposes in certain buildings in the city that as far as security and location sounds right, uh, we would make sure that th that installation would be put in place so then later on city, either I don't know with money or just pre bono or how it works, would let the artists do their exhibitions and maybe the proceeds or whatever would come to the city of Glendale. But that is an area that needs money and with the budgets, right
right now, I suppose that 1 and 2 percent could really, really be helpful because I, I know that money could be used in many directions, but I hope the money that comes for that purpose is not going to go for different uses while there's a dire need to make this kind of um, accommodations. And also for a city like City of Glendale with so many artists, we don't have any little even museums or a place that we could have on different bases. We could curate different artwork. So um, I hope that would put, be put in consideration when the money is being discussed because that is what the community and the artists are very interested. Actually, some of them wanted to come and have a big show thing here. And I said, listen, this would look more like a riot. <laughs> we don't want that. We just want to make sure that I'll bring this to the attention of the uh, people in the city, and then accordingly you guys would consider that when you do your planning as for us where the money should go. Partially. Thank you. Any uh, other remarks? What's that? No, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Because the date to me is old, but I didn't know what that is. It's a beautiful card. It was in our packet. It was there on our on our uh, on the dice thing, and it is NLCLA. But the date is uh, September 11th, so I don't know what that is. That probably was last in the uh, city. It was mail. last in the mail. No, old mail. You didn't. You weren't here last month. Yeah, but it's September 11th. This is we received it in the last uh, month's package. I received mine in the last month's package. No, this was here. This no. was on, not in my package. It was here. So, and yeah, even our meeting was not, it was after uh, September 11th. So, I didn't know. But the, the invitation form looks nice. Maybe we could use for our diamond awards. <laughs> okay. Okay, just as a reminder, uh, December 11th, Sunday, at the Bryan Library. Um, they're, they're doing their uh, special invitation to celebrate the upcoming renovation of the historic Brand Library. Uh, there's a uh, pre-renovation art sale. There's uh, the El Miradero tour. And there's going to be refreshments. So uh, make sure you go there uh, from 2 to 6 p.m. With that, uh, next item. Item 7, written communications. I don't have any. Next item. Adjournment. Thank you.